Tell Her Me Dad is a podcast about anything we think is interesting or funny, including lots of music and pop culture discussion, and of course, dadisms ad-libbed by us, three friends who have cracked each other up for the last 25 years. Please enjoy our episode entitled, We're All Gonna Die. What's your favorite harmonica tune? I think you ask any random person on the street that's our age, and it's some blues traveler song. <laughs> I'll tell you guys something. For a million dollars, I couldn't name a Blues Traveler song. I know they had a hit. Run Around, I believe. I don't know if that's the name of the song, but that's the... They Why say, you wanna give me the run around? Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I might, I feel like every time we start the podcast, I'm going to ask the same question. Color me dad. Is that, is that what we want to call it? It's like naming a band. It's the hardest thing. It's easier to learn how to play the instrument and write these songs than it is to. In a sense. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure in. this same conversation is happening in Los Angeles right now, and Eddie Vedder is sitting there with <laughs> Homeboy being like, "You really like Pearl, Pearl Jam?" <laughs> <laughs> I think you're absolutely right. I think he today woke up and thought, "God, it's such I don't know about that name." <laughs> it you know it is like a band. It's kind of like we, you know, a band plays and annoys you know people in the garage and then locally and then somebody's like y'all should annoy people everywhere i think we need to start this over we, no we're good we're all good we did good that's what editing's for exactly and we already played the the intro song so we really we don't want to do that again you have to play the intro song live when you do it yes and also we can't play the intro song anyway because we'd have to pay for that i don't think I don't think that costs any money. I don't think the whatever Mountain Boys or whoever that song is right. from is you know suing people. It's like, <laughs> it's you'd like, be surprised. It's, be the, it's like taking it's like taking Andy. Bucks is the last time they've made money in quite a while. It's like taking Andy on a date. You know, he's like lucky to be there. Yeah, just yeah. happy to be here. And you're gonna get screwed in the end. <laughs> <laughs> hey, baby. I'm kissing the microphone. Am I doing that right? Yeah, I think that, that sounds, sounds better. That sounds good for you. Yeah, I'm sure this looks cool. No, they my doing it right. <laughs> Josh, <laughs> you're, you're a little off axis there, boss. I'm gonna turn down your game a little bit. You're a little clippy. Yeah, I'm doing it. <laughs> <laughs> what uh, What would be What would be a pick for worst band name you've ever uh. heard? Worst band name. Um, well, I really hate that band. Um, they had a song called Closing Time. Semisonic. I just hate them. Wait, they, had a, they had a single that I really liked a whole lot. I was singing in my sleep. Are you serious? It's a very, you very like song. It. I love it. See, I don't know, man. I understand that people who run like record labels and stuff like that, they pick the worst songs ever. We should do a best worst single off an album, you know, like so many albums like the album's great and the single that they put out is horrible and they're like gosh we don't know why it didn't sell anything but there's some gem that, on the album that's fantastic there might be eight of them and they skip it and they're like on Coil uh, no not Coil but um, Dulcinea um, you might have to explain to people what that is that's a Toad the Wet Sprocket album that's no really no, that's, good. that's totally universal you wouldn't have to explain <laughs> everybody <that>. everybody <laughs> knows about Dulcinea but no the song uh, um I think this topic will lead me into another one I've been thinking about all week. It's called Fall Down. And, you know, it's just not... Oh, that's a great song. But it's not the, it's not the single. The only three people that care in the entire world right. are right sitting here. right here. Yep. Actually, two. Andy's probably out. All right. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> I like to the West Rocket, but it, it, it makes me think of a, of a thing that I've thought about all week, which is... You're getting old? Well, I'm getting old, but... I'm getting old, and I don't realize how far out of the loop I am oh. on everything. I realize how far out you are. It's, I have a good handle on that. I work with a lot of uh, 20-somethings, and I see it. Uh, and and Wes, and a 13-year-old. Yeah, and yeah, just right. just the language will enrage me. <laughs> right. like what bet, else? Like bet. 
What's bet? Hey, can you do this? Bet. That's what pretty, does that, that mean? That's pretty old, actually. Do you know what that, like, what it, what's... What is the gist of that when the kid says I, bet? That's an acknowledgement. That means right, like, okay. You. Oh, like you can bet that I'll do it? That's basically what they're saying. You can bet on it, pops. I don't think it's quite that, but it's... Bet it up. They'll elaborate. Sometimes they'll say bet it up. Bet, bet that up. up. Are you serious? Mm-hmm. The thing that infuriates wow. me the most is uh, uh, the no cap. No cap. No cap. Have you, heard, have you guys heard this? No. I heard this on the TikTok. It, <laughs> it means no... No... Uh, <laughs> No lie. Basically. No lie. No cap means no lie. And we are going to sound even older talking about this. Yeah, really. <laughs> this reminds me of a meme that I saw on Facebook of the Golden Girl sitting around a table and it's Dorothy talking to to Blanche and Rose and, and the, the headline said, or the caption said, this is me trying to explain TikTok to, <laughs> to my friends. I always get it. Um, my 13 year old's room is right beside the laundry room so when i'm doing laundry i can hear him um on his xbox and which is the most toxic place on earth yeah oh absolutely i mean it's he's yeah. oh you mean he's talking to other people sure See, i'm even younger than you guys in that i've never had an xbox so. oh, i mean i've never personally owned one i mean i still own one but it's basically a netflix machine yeah but he he sits in there and we're talking about the the whitest and most spoiled kid you can imagine. And he's sitting, bruh, bruh. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just like, <laughs> no, bruh, bruh, listen, bruh, bruh, bruh. I'm, bruh, I'm bruh, offended. Bruh, 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 So. <laughs> well, you ever talk to him about that? Like, what? Is, yes. And he's but like. But it just goes, I mean. And he's like, bruh, bruh, bruh. It's bruh, no bruh, different. Bruh, it's bruh, it's bruh. never, that's the cycle that's never going to stop. It's, it's. Well, Kids versus adults will never die. Like that's our, always going to be a thing. And and just like I mean, we're sitting here right now doing the same thing. Our I, I very much remember my dad taking me to Little League and listening to Pearl Jam ten in the truck, and my dad just being like, "This is what is this? This is garbage." Yeah, exactly. And that's never going to die. Like that's always going to be the case. What was our version of bruh, dude? Dude, yeah, probably. Oh man. man! I remember my oh, dad. Man. I remember my dad losing his mind when I was younger, watching Beavis and Butthead. Oh, and whenever my, my dad would hear the, uh, <laughs> he would just. My dad would just be shaking. My mom to this day, well, if she saw Beavis and Butthead on television, would talk about what an abomination it was. Have you watched it like it's, recently in the past couple of years? Yeah, it's it, kind of unwatchable. It. it <laughs> Like Goonies. I remember. No. Oh, no. Now, Goonies is unwatchable because once you have a kid and they yell and you turn on Goonies, you're like, I got enough of this. Every line is delivered with, oh, my gosh, Mikey, Mikey. Oh, God, God. <laughs> There's no dynamics at all in the kids' lines. I've been saved by my pitches to pal. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Got a bell. Every line Fiddy is. Got a bell. Every no, line. it's not. No, it's not. Booty. It's a booty trap. That's what I said, a booty trap. That kid is sitting somewhere very drunk right now. <laughs> no, he's... I used to be data. <laughs> he's doing what well. What happened? No, he was in, uh, he was in Indiana Jones, uh, in the Temple of Doom. Remember, he pushed the pedals on the floor. Indy! Is that okay. the thing? Me? Okay, so now he's sitting somewhere very drunk saying, <laughs> I was in Indiana Jones too! <laughs> what happened? I think he's doing well. Was actually. that the thing me and Zay were for Halloween? <laughs> forgot about that you'd got to see the picture of that i bet you never saw it you were short round for how no i was indiana jones it was fantastic it was were absolutely you, fantastic were you indiana jones in cargo shorts <laughs> no <laughs> it was uh it was not a good look but we borrowed a leather jacket i remember and a hat um it was absolutely fantastic you guys should have won whatever there was to I, win. i'm pretty sure that i have the picture Today's episode is brought to you by Bob Evans. Because oh. we uh, we went there this morning and there'll be lots of pauses, I'm sure, in this episode for blowing it up. Wow. Because, you know, I went to church. <laughs> you guys, you missed out on wonderful, awesome, fantastic church service. I, don't worry, though. I took three of them communion cups, so you guys will be covered. I, I was witnessing to Andy. Uh-huh. So now, how do you feel? <laughs> I feel pretty good. You're in there playing drums. I don't have any to, sausage. I didn't in, any uh, sausage. You were tr- playing drums, still trying to be a rocker. I was out. I've just accepted that I'm a heathen. <laughs> I've accepted I'm not a great drummer, so I just roll with it. You've always been a fantastic drummer. 
Fantastic I, is always, the wrong word. You really. play very incorrectly, yeah, but it's true. but it's, it's true. great. Well, I got them one that one time. You're very roll. you're very you're very loud, and you're the exact opposite when you play the drums as you are as a human being. You're very <laughs> loud, loud, abrasive, and irritating, and just <laughs> very caveman. Were you one of those people? Um, did you just sit down one day and just start playing the drums? No, I always wanted to, and I was in a band, and it, and it was, if I were to sit down and play drums, everybody would stop what they're doing and say, no, right, <laughs> quit, get up, no, uh, don't touch them. I can't separate the and, two halves of my body. I can't do, like, my legs cannot do, do a, what? Different, a different time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, then um, I had an opportunity from a uh, driven drummer, Jeremy, remember that guy? Mm-hmm. They he sold his I guess you know his first drum set or whatever I don't even know what brand it was but he sold it to me for a hundred dollars and it had pretty much everything you needed to now be that's horrible. A, that there's a deal it really yeah and I was like a hundred dollars for a whole drum set and I set it up in the back room at church and I put I every, every everything I loved in my headphones and I just I mean played sunny day real estate toad the wet sprocket um, the posies obviously um, your your fate your 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 favorite pick for the Posies album, uh, Frosting on the Beater. It's one of the reasons why it's my favorite. That is band. one of the best drum playing yeah, albums. Yeah, really. And so these these things I'd listened to for years, and I knew in my head already. Then I just tried to like make it happen, and it was you know very bad for a long time. Have you ever noticed that Wes like? If he really wants to do something, like he does it in a way that makes it seem easy, <laughs> like piss me off. <laughs> <laughs> like everything that you've touched, like guitars, drums, computers. You son of a <laughs> Yeah. It's just like, how do you make it look so effortless? Like, you know why? It's because he went to church while we were at Bob Evans. Maybe that's what I'm doing wrong. <laughs> no, in, in reality, I think I do all my messing around when nobody's, you know, around and try to make it whatever it is make it decent that's probably one of the biggest flaws i have as a human being is i don't make good use of my downtime i'm like oh, i bet i bet you don't you don't sit and watch tiktok when I, I, two hours i don't i bet you don't ever kind of you're not a tv guy no I, it, it, tv now in my life um there's an app on my tv called that i got got on there called pluto tv oh pluto's awesome and you know you can watch you know you can watch the star trek channel you know it's on 24 and it's completely 7. free completely I, free i hate star trek well i so cannot get into it my, it was just an example of like you can also watch there's housewives of new jersey or whatever like now, the channel now that plays it 24 7 and so what i will do is turn on fail army <laughs> while like I, if i have 10 minutes a, you know a week one night a week i'll be like waiting um just waiting to go to bed you know sometimes i'll like turn on fail army and watch people you know fall on the mostly skateboarders you know break their face I and would, stuff like that i would pay money to have a live stream of you <laughs> of watching you watch that <laughs> i don't make any <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't make any um just any. smacking smacking his kids. <laughs> just, uh, <laughs> did you see <laughs> that, that, stop. Did you see that that boy went right in the middle? I had an amazing <laughs> miraculous occurrence. Something big okay. happened at my house last night. Let's hear it. Big. Big news. Huge. Okay. Holden. Yeah. My son. Went pee pee in the potty. Oh, that's a big last night. You might say how old he is, First just time. so that yeah. if he's, anybody's passing by, he's, listen, eight. he's fourteen years old. <laughs> 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 uh, no, he's two. Oh, well. He's two, and I'm sure we're 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 late. Or no, when uh, there's, well, no, he's probably. But I see. I think he's. I think it's of, right on the money. I think he's gifted. Yeah. Your kids probably can't pee pee in the potty. They can. I think they good. can. We don't make them though. We don't. Want them <laughs> We started with like this thing that looks like a pool, like a big step ladder that connects to your toilet, and it's just really more daunting than the toilet itself. And he just kind of it probably target. appeared to be more like a like a slicky slide to him. Uh -huh. He just kind of got up there and was like, "I'm here." Does it go like ding 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 or something like that? It, it, it does make noise. He's got flushing down, okay. and he has had flushing. <laughs> yeah, kids at down eight from months. A, and uh, and you got to give him get him a target. You got to get him something to shoot at. She, the wife says that there are these. I can't imagine I this still would work, this but day she says that there's these that. stickers 
that you're supposed to put inside of the kid's toilet. Mm. And when warm, when they get warm, oh. like a picture will appear. So it teaches oh. them like, hey, you pee here and you'll. Or you can also use gummies. Kids love gummies. You just be like, you want some gummies? Or take a, take a whiz. The original one of that is the urinal cake that used to be in school urinals. Eroding. Was Eroding. Yeah. Eroding. That was the, the 80s target. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we need some new targets uh, down in the downstairs bathroom gym. I know I'm not alone in that. I, I tell you what he does have down <laughs> like a champ is Hot Wheels. He's like a ninja with throwing stars and getting that stuff in the toilet immediately. Oh, wow. I mean, he can be across the room and you can be standing in front like a goalie and he's just, <laughs> and all of them are in there. Does he flush something like valuable down the toilet? We, we haven't had any bad, like if I'm in the, the other room and I hear, hold it from the other <laughs> you room, know like, I know exactly in the toilet. like something's in the toilet. They make one of those little locks that kids can't get around for the toilet. So it locks the seat down. You think about that. Telling stories about your son makes me thankful that I'm going to be having a girl. It, uh, hang on there. Chief. <laughs> See, <laughs> no, I got three of those. I, I was. <laughs> it was my my first thought is I was in the other room when he when he started to go, and my wife's in there. She's so excited. And she's praising him, like yeah yeah yeah. And I walk in, you know, and he's sitting there and he's peed in the pot, and I'm like, Psh. he's sitting down. It's not like. You know. <laughs> Like I've been doing this, you've never. <laughs> I've been doing this since you've known me, and it's never been a. I've never gotten any deal. praise. Right. <laughs> yeah. Where's my praise at? I pay the mortgage. Nobody's <laughs> clapping for me. <laughs> I called the bank today. They said you made a payment. Yay! All the beers are called. All the bills are called out. Yay! Good job, baby. I'm so proud of you. I think two is a. It's a fine age. It's not certainly not late. I mean, as long as they're not like four or five, I would think that any time is good. I kind of, I actually have memories of potty training. Really? Yes. Let me ask you this. Those well, memories. Do you, do you remember 2008? <laughs> no. No, no, I do not. <laughs> do you have a very weak stomach? Uh, it depends on what it is. Okay. What about you? Uh, it depends. Uh, I'm pretty I terrible. always have. And anyone that oh, knows me, anyone that knows me will tell you that it, it's like there's everyone, if I see bone, I'm in trouble. Everyone that knows me has hilarious stories of my gagging and stuff like that. <laughs> so like, yeah. I'm a robot. My kid. Okay. Two days ago, I'm changing an exploded diaper. My hand was covered. Like it was all over me. Oh, dude. I, it doesn't affect me because it's your kid. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's yeah, so okay. weird. And I know that anyone listening to this that has kids will just be like, yeah, yeah. No, no kidding. But it's it's really like I'm like I, I as I was washing my hands, I was like, I cannot. How did we get here? And there's a converse too because I could walk down the street and if somebody you know was in some accident and there's blood everywhere, like I, I think I could be helpful. I could call police. I could you know put pressure on something. If it's my own kids, I lose my mind. I could, they're dead because I'm like, oh no, ah. you're beating the beating somebody who walked by. You know, look what happened. I, I'm not helpful at all. I lose my. Oh, lose I my think mind that's. I mean, of course, well, it's, it's just out of fear and worry, though. But yeah, you can still, you can carp, uh, emotionally disconnect from the stranger you're helping. Sure. Yeah, and just be like, I'm going to do the right thing. I'm yeah. going to make a phone call. But it's something like like anything like th- anything that would just would have you know three years ago just would would have made me projectile vomit like i've had vomit everything else on me and i'm just like oh damn you know it's not i think that that's why nature evolution god whatever you want to call it makes babies cute because you have to go through those things and it's a lot easier if a if a cute a child that looks like you is puking on you versus if she was old and fat and i, smelly. I disagree i think that if your kid Puked on you. all over my hand. You it's going to gross me out. Yeah. There's something about the fact the that George. it's still you. It's it's even, you know, I was, uh, I can't remember if it was one of you guys I was having the conversation with not long ago that it's um, somehow it even, the fear of dying actually kind of, to me, goes away a little or not as, like it's weird. It's like if you have like a kid or offspring opposed to before, you know, you were just all, all alone. It's like the thought of dying. It's like almost like you still 
are you, exists. Are you saying that now that you have a child, you fear it less? Sure. Or more? Yes. Yes. I would think it would be the opposite. Well, I get what you're saying too, because you want to be there. But what I'm saying is, like, it's all those like. I don't know. It's it's knowing that there's still a part of you. Okay, I understand what you're saying. Like, it's funny you say that because this has been a topic that me and my wife have talked about, which is I'd come to terms with the fact that I'm 43 years old. So I'd come to terms with the fact that I probably was not going to have another generation after me carry on. That was the biggest issue for her in in terms of why she was upset that she couldn't have a kid. Because we tried for three years before she finally got pregnant with what we have now. And we've had other issues that I won't discuss publicly. But that was the thing that ate her up was that the cargo n- pants. You already, <laughs> you already discussed it publicly. There's nothing you can do. I, I, I've got another outfit related talk to talk about this <laughs> okay, week. Great. Uh, but that was a big thing for her was that her family's name would die with her. And it's not actually her family name is not continuing. It's mine. Right. Right. But she wanted to be able to have. Uh, you know, a child, you know, to be able to carry on. Sure. Past her genes and I had that values. Same, I had that same. I was the last of my family name. I am too. I, I was. Well, that's not really true. I have a cousin that has the same last name as me. But I'd come to terms with the fact that I probably was not going to have a child. She she did not come to terms with that and kept trying. But it's a good thing. On the opposite of what you're saying, I have been in places in my life where I didn't really care if I lived or died. But now that I have a child, that drive is very, very strong to want to stay alive. Yeah, I I totally hear and see where that would come from. But man, I cannot really. That's you really think that you'll be okay with dying, knowing that you're. No, no, no. I'm just saying before, like just death is the reason I've even noticed. Oh, absolutely. Like I can't. You've always been scared of death. Oh, sure. I don't think I knew that about you. It's happening. I think most people are. It's, every, it's, it's on the I way. think most people if you really 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 sit there and just it's going to happen it's inevitable like it's, it's I don't care who you are it's still it, it's, it's interesting when you look at small things in life and you realize that I am going to be dead I'm worried about this think of people that you know existed in the past you know mm-hmm. famous or whatever they probably were concerned about their stucco walls or whatever and you think now they're dead (laughs) whatever it was bothering them they're dead you know everything that you do and make during your life at some point is dust Mm -hmm. at some points it's you know all the i think of this in terms of the work you and i do andy um all the time like you because you we care we're up you guys are up late the other night Mm -hmm. and at some point in the future that you can see you will drive by that building and be like gosh it's it's a you know it's a walmart or whatever it's nothing and everything that we did in all the late nights it's all dust and nobody cares and everybody's moved on and it's a I, I have actually seen some of my work end up as just cobwebs and shut off and all that kind of stuff. I have those thoughts about you currently at work because I'll see things that I know with that when you were there were important to you that have died or no longer exist or like there's there's traces of you everywhere there. But <laughs> if you call gross. the right if you call no if you call the right phone numbers, my voice, your voice is still, still there. there. People tell me that if you go in there with one of those little blue lights. <laughs> That's where he puked but over I, there in the corner. I understand what you're saying. You know, all the things that we think are important and stress and stay up late about, eventually, you know, it doesn't mean anything. Did I ever tell you about the the wire cutters? Did I ever tell you that story? Maybe. At, at the building there where I worked for six years mm-hmm. with you, I was always in the ceilings and everything and running wire and all this stuff. And my dad gave me this old pair of wire cutters. They have like red handles and they're like my entire life. I can remember those being in like the tool case. Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my dad would give me any tool I ever need here. Take it. It's yours. You know, and some at some point he did that and I had it in my tool belt and I could not find it for years. I didn't see it. I thought it was lost. I'm not exaggerating. The very last week I was there, I think you and I, we were finishing that camera Cameras. project. Yep. And we wrote a little funny note on one of the on one of the panels <laughs> It's when somebody finds it. Um, it's a little Easter egg there in the ceiling of that building. I, remember, I know exactly in, what you're talking about. In, in the last week, I had to run a wire or something. It was like two or three days before I left. And how many ceiling tiles are in that building? 7,000, right? So I pop up on a ladder, move this thing over, and what falls out of the ceiling? Wire cutters. Red grip wire cutters fell off the panel that I moved. If I'd moved the one on the right, 
they would have stayed there. But I moved it and went, you know, went like that, and it fell out on the floor. That's crazy. I just think that's it has nothing to do with what we're talking about, but that, it's one of those. That's still an interesting story. It's amazing. Yeah, I have them back now. They don't cut at all. They're so old. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, back to death. <laughs> yeah. yeah, back to dying. I, I'm actually excited for you to have this baby because, like, all this stuff that you're talking about is in theory, <laughs> and it really it does change a little bit. You know, you can try to prepare yourself. It's uh, it's an interesting over the top of that roller coaster, you know. And most things that you prepare, in my experience, most things you do prepare for never amount to a hill of beans. It's not the and same. It doesn't and turn out being what you think. Yeah, Back but, to death. But preparing is so I sleep better at night. Sure. Which is really strange because... Which is why you're out buying fancy new beds. That's right. I got, mm. a, I got a sleep number bed yesterday. What? Yeah. Delivered. Crazy. And it, I was talking to Tara, and it's funny how the things that you notice when you have been downtrodden for lack of a better word like i can have mem- i have memories of when i was at my work this is much better than the floor <laughs> yeah this is much better than the floor <clears throat> i think you, you had an air mattress at one point didn't you i, I have See, yeah. but you know a stack of cargo shorts makes for a heck of a pillow <laughs> in a pinch <laughs> It's just funny how things change like that. And I have slept on cargo shorts. Before. You know what actually triggered this thought? It was not sleep number beds. It was bounty paper towels. Because they're the best, right? Because they are brand name paper towels and they're not dollar store cheap ones. And I took one off and saw like a bounty logo on a paper towel and I was like, I can afford bounty paper towels. What have I become? What has happened? Like, this changed so You know fast. you're a lucky girl, honey. <laughs> That's right. I provide nothing but the best here. I just want to say for the record that the Kroger Red Label brand, right up there, and you save two bucks. Kroger paper towels are fantastic. They are. Uh, they have gotten very expensive lately. Oh, are they? And if I'm going to pay that price, I'm, I'm just going to go ahead I'm and do it. Plus, I was at Target. I mean, I don't slum it at Kroger and Walmart anymore. <laughs> I'm at Target. Are you kidding? You go to Target? We do sometimes. Wow. I don't I don't go this in guy. Target. I don't it's go into Target. Again. Somebody buys me a gift card. I go in there like, Ooh, what am I going to get? We went to Target because we M&Ms? needed towels. And car- Target actually has really good towels. And they're like nine bucks a piece. Huh. Uh, whoopee woo. I'm going to tell you something about paper products. <laughs> it's worth the money to do the Sam's Club thing because. Oh, we have one of those. The toilet paper and the paper towels. Price per Per, per fanciness, for quality, whatever the ratio, quality to price is just, it's the best. Yeah, Walmart. You got to buy a ton, though, but it's, you know, they don't go bad, right? I go to Sam's every Saturday and load up with Coke Zero and Spindrift and LaCroix water and, yeah. LaCroix? I, I, I don't know if it's LaCroix and or. Here I am holding a Perrier. I think mm-hmm. it's Perrier, but it's too fancy for me to even say, but I've gotten hooked. And you tell me five years ago I would be even drinking ever a Perrier, I would... I'm pretty partial to Nestle Splash. <laughs> I, mean, Nestle I mean... Splash. <laughs> I remember church Kool-Aid in the 80s. We didn't, no sugar and we didn't need it anyway. Yeah, it was just drink. I'm not, a part of, I'm not a part of any of that stuff, man. Like, I do a lot of shopping for the house and I just make everyone mad because... <laughs> You get the cheapest. <laughs> oh, dude, I just don't care. Garbage. I don't, I don't, that. I've it's never paper. been the guy. Like, I'm going to get the 50 cent roll because then you know, you're going to use five times as many, yeah, and you're going to end up spending the same amount. There are some things, and everybody hates you. Yeah, yeah. and everybody will hate you. <laughs> Dad, when this you, is not the good paper towel. Just, I've never. There are some things worth paying for, and paper towels is one of them. No, I mean, I, and like the toilet paper. Like, there's so many people just be like, I, I cannot use that. I've just never had that. Like, I don't. I'm, I'm worried about like how much do I have to use in practicality. <laughs> If, if I can go through a roll myself in two or three days, it's time to step it up a little bit. I'm also gone. Like, I'm at work. So, so here's all this garbage point? stuff. I'm leaving. <laughs> I'll be at work where we have the good stuff. <laughs> Somebody else buying my wipes. Here, here here's for y'all's bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> there are just certain things that are worth paying for. And... <laughs> Paper towels, soda for for one. Like I'm not drinking Mountain Crisp or Bubba. <laughs> That's not real, is it? I would. I want to try Mountain Crisp. I think that those are Save a Lot brands. <laughs> they have the best orange soda I've ever had in my life, and it's called Crisp. 
Hmm. And it is better than Orange Sun Kissed. Orange Crush, Orange Crisp. It's good. And it's Sun like, Crisp. It's like two bucks for a 12 pack. <laughs> I, I bought like, some Sun Crisp, honey. <laughs> I like a good, I like a good grape soda. But the good ones are really few and far between. Like there's a lot of, like there's a lot of junk out there. The best one is, um, what's the, they make an orange soda. It's a Pepsi brand. Um, Crush? Crush, yeah. yes. I just, just their grape it. soda of that. I'm a ghost over here. <clears throat> when I lived in Atlanta, beside of my work, they um, they had this place in there, and it was basically like they always had like 15, 20 different types of like locally brewed beers mm-hmm. and stuff, and they changed it out all the time. Um, and you would go in there and buy these things uh, called growlers, like this big, yeah. enormous glass bottles of like how some people use for like a piggy bank or something. And you would get like a big thing of beer, take it home or what have you. They also had specialty sodas. Every once in a while, they would change out. And they had this Gorilla Grape soda. That sounds fantastic. Yeah, really. Right there. Oh, my God. God. You got it. It was... Grape is my favorite. You would put everything. it in a styrofoam cup and it would like immediately dye the cup. Like it would just be, oh, you, you know, that's going on the inside. Yeah, when I vaped, but it was so good. I vaped grape flavored vape. Like I, I, you said, when you vaped, you don't vape. You didn't know that. I quit in June. So you, like, dude, you don't even vape. Uh, no, you I don't vape, bro. I have bro. Ne- bra, bra. I've never vaped. <laughs> Do you vape? Let me tell you something. I have smoked many a cigarette, but I've never vaped. So you don't smoke anything? No. Man, I just want to congratulate you. I, your public. I actually didn't know that because I remember the last time, I believe it was when you were at my house for the first time, you were kind of... Yeah, me and Kristen were... Why don't were, you vape? Yeah. Like, you were kind of giving me, like, what do you... You, 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 you used yeah. to say, well, I don't, right, but I didn't, but, you know. Like, I didn't understand the transition of cigarettes to nothing. It was a step down for me. That's really interesting. To, are you not nicoretting or anything? That's fantastic. I used patches and nicorette gum for, I was on the patches for eight weeks, and I did the gum off and on for another month or two, but... It's been since June of last year. I can't, I can't believe that. Actually, I have a little app that tells me exactly how many days it has been. Wow. Because you told the app, I quit vaping today. Yeah. And it congratulates me every so often like an app should. <laughs> you ain't vaped. It's been two. How does it know? <laughs> you lie to it. It's been 258 days. Wow. I have saved $1,500. You know, that's why you get those paper towels. <laughs> that's why I can afford bounty that's paper why towels. you can afford bounty paper towels. I mean, all joking aside, I mean, that is a factor. I was spending $70 a week between juice and coils. Wow. Yeah, this is the most sober I've ever been in my life. There is a I cigar just... shop right at the bottom of the hill of my where my house is. Really? And I've recently been thinking. I can't have one. Don't go down that road. I can't. I can't have one. But You'll be not. smoking again yeah, before really. you know it. I think so. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, what has more nicotine in it than a cigar? But you don't inhale them. It still uh, goes in your nose. What if you do? Because I... Uh, why, <laughs> why do you think people <clears throat> snort pills? And also... Also, <laughs> I don't... Snort pills. Also, and I don't mean I to... I smoked a cigar, and then the next day, snorted some yeah. pills. <laughs> also, I don't mean to, like... I, I'm not trying to, like... I have... Better self-control than I do? Is that where you're going with that? I had a weird, like, I confused my wife. Like, when, like I was I was straight up like, I'm, this is my last pack of cigarettes. I'm going to quit smoking. She's like, okay. You know, and I literally, I put them down. I never smoked. I, I just, and I haven't. I haven't had one for I'm not over two, two years now. I did the same with alcohol. I, I haven't you- had a drop. Like, I, I don't have, and somehow... You know, grace of God. It's. I'm not saying I'm. It's. I don't think it's about willpower. I just. I don't. I know freaks of nature like you. I just. I just. Don't it's been super that. easy, and I. And I was straight up like, especially with the drinking, because I drank daily for years. I was like, this is going to be tough. It's going to be. I'm not going to be able to sleep. I'm like, I. I put it down. I've just been fine. I know people like you. I work, when I was a uh, dispatcher, I worked with a fellow that was probably in his 80s smoked marble reds every day of his life for 50 years wow. all of a sudden he just stopped and I, it just blew my mind because everything that i've ever successfully quit took months of just wrapping my, my mind around the concept of quitting and then i would have to do things to slowly wean myself off and then 
it would take a lot of effort to get it there. Now, eventually I would do it and wanting to is the key, but I've never been able to just be like, I'm done one day. Right. I, ha- I have at least the knowledge that if I smoke one, it's over. You used to smoke those dirty clothes too. I did. I think it's different. I tell you, sometimes I wake up at night and I'm like, I can smell a clove. Or so gross. I think you have the same bug that I have, but you have the thing that made you not try it in the first place. Well, that's true. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot. There's an enormous list of things I never tried. But in terms of um, alcohol, smoking, especially smoking, um, it just it could never just be one or just every now and then. It's just. It all the time up to 10. Anything that makes me feel good, I just want yep. more of. There you go. Yeah. If it feels good, do it, man. Yeah. So I just can't do the things that make me feel good. Or the things that I do, I reserve for like, I'll never forget a conversation you and I had one time. It was, we were walking outside of church. It was after you brought me, you like, you would come pick me up. Yeah. And it was like my first real attempt at getting clean. And I was explaining to you what it was like. To, of why I had the trouble I did. And your analogy was chocolate cake. Chocolate. And you're like, that's how I could relate to you. <laughs> and I think it, I know exactly how you feel, I knew, man. man. It's a chocolate cake every I time I walk in the kitchen. I can't get little Debbie off my back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm itching, man. <laughs> you got little, 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 little Debbie? <laughs> and I remember saying that. I was like, imagine if you Yo, had baby, to- I got these fudge rounds. <laughs> Imagine if you had to eat chocolate cake 10 times a day, and then, you know, when the little Debbie was out, you got deathly ill. I'll tell another sad story about why I don't like hot dogs. When I was <laughs> this is gonna, yeah, this wait, is gonna Josh get. has a weak stomach, so he just told us that. You no, 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 it, it's very quick. When I was really, really poor, and all I my could un- afford. My uncle came over. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Speedway hot dogs. Oh, that's why oh, yeah, you can't. That, that's yeah. not a hot dog. That's all I ate for like weeks, and oh. I can't even look at a hot dog. Are you kidding? Yeah. You ate more than once? Every day. Wow. You know what's Speedway... Two hot dogs for a dollar. I mean, you can't beat that. You know what makes Speedway, or what Speedway makes really well, is pizza. <laughs> <laughs> You're in a um, Breakfast pizza. Okay. It's yeah, really, really, really All really that good. stuff with the bread. The last time I had eaten from a Speedway mm-hmm. was when I moved back here. Because they don't have Speedway. And I was at, no, they do. But I was at Speedway about to make a hot dog or something. Saddled up beside me a a, a, a street gentleman. Mm-hmm. And he was just, had blood all over himself. And he proceeded to make himself a hot dog. Beside wow. me. And I was just like, you know, I'm just. Not going to eat I'm these just, hot dogs I'm anymore. just okay. And that reminds me, the worst band name is Hoobastank. Ooh, no question. That's a good, a good one. one. No question. And, and you saying a, a, about a bloody obo made me think of Hoobas. I think that's what it means. I think just about every popular band from 1995 to 2000 had the worst band names. What are some? Third Eye Blonde. <sighs> yep. I'm with you. Goodbye. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna rap a little at the end of this song, kids. You're gonna love it. I got a lisp too that would make the X special. You know, it'd be great if we just dropped a little stank on it. <laughs> yeah, all that stuff. I like to stretch the, the neck out of all my t-shirts. You can see my chain better. Papa Roach. I mean, oh, um, there you go. Terrible, terrible name. Yep, yep. Lit. Yeah, right. All those like that. You say all those names, and I just think I'm, um, you know. In Colorado, college town. I think guys that have frosted tips. And <laughs> <laughs> I got my tips frosted, guys. We're ready for the third eye blind concert. <laughs> I mean, the 90s were wild when it came to like popular music. I mean, I couldn't imagine any other era that those kind of bands would be on television. I was in a record store the other day. Josh, remember? Wow, that? shocker. Well, yeah, but I was in there, and their song, you know, they just had, like, this rotation of music, and the song came on, it was like, Can you take me higher? Oh, that's Creed. Yeah. Okay. And they just let it, <laughs> they just let it play. And I was like, <laughs> I kept looking over at them like, you're going to hit they skip just, on this, stop. right? I mean, it was Tom Petty before that. There was uh, just some, was you know, it radio? No, it was some sort of thing they had control over. 
there was no commercial. So he had it at his fingertips. And they just, I kept looking at the guy like, you're going to hit skip, right? I'm in here. I, honestly, when it started, I thought, after I realized he's not going to hit skip, I thought, I'll just go outside for a minute. Because I can't, you know. And I thought, well, you probably think I'm weird going outside and coming back in. You think he was you're behind, weird not hitting skip on that. You think he was possibly behind the counter going, I'm going to move him last two copies that Creed record. Oh, right my God. I was the only one in there. <laughs> that's, that's, there were two that's staff. What, that's, that's, that's what it says God. about you. <laughs> Guys he like saw Creed. you coming, and he was like, you know what? That boy likes Creed, yeah. I can tell you right now. And guess what's coming up next? Metallica. Nickelback. Nickelback. Oh, gosh, no, no. <laughs> Those guys have sold like eighty million records. And the worst, the worst band name. There was some Silver Chair too. That's a terrible name. That's Silver Chair is actually. Name. I have to disagree with you on there. I you will. mean that's a good name, Silver Chair? I, I don't know that it's a good name, but it's. Do you know? I, I do, like. Do you them. know the story of how they named themselves Silver Chair? They've been going since they were like twelve and thirteen. Mm -hmm. They used to sit around and hang out. I, I saw this in an interview once because I actually do like a lot of the later Silver Chair I don't Chair even stuff. know who you guys are. <laughs> you, Silver I Chair. promise you, I know. Let's just turn I on promise, presidents of the United States and just get it over. I promise you there are later records, like probably two to three different Silver Chair albums that if you heard, you would like them. Uh, well, it's a good thing um, I'm not going to hear them because um, they're called Silver Chair. They were calling a local radio station to request Nirvana's Sliver. <laughs> And um, this other artist by the name Something Chair, mm -hmm. and they had written them down on paper and looked and were like, "Look, oh, still the chair." But that's the story they tell. That's the, that's worst. the worst story. That's the worst yeah. story ever, guys. I only oh. like Silver Chair because oh, Train. I hate Ooh. everything about Train. Yeah, me too. Their name, every song, everything they stand everything, for, everything, 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 every picture. I hate it all. There is a uh, positive memory I have. If Jerry Morrison ever listens to this podcast, he's listening. Uh, <laughs> hey, hey, Jerry, what's up? Man? Him and I used to hang out, and like when we were in high school, I would take him to school, and we would listen to Silverchair in my Red Geo Metro. And for some reason, every time I hear that first album, I think of him. Now, the first record is terrible. They were on Saturday Night Live on, off of that record. I watched that episode oh, not that oh, long Oh, well, never mind. It wasn't bad. <laughs> no, I'm saying like... <laughs> you know who was on Saturday Night Live? The Baja Men with uh, Who Let the Dogs Out. Did so you? there. I'm just saying. Like, <laughs> people bought it? Oh, no, no, no. I bought it. But I'm, I'm talking, if you, I mean, there's tons of stuff you used to, you know, listen to back when we were kids that you can't necessarily listen to now. But however, Silverchair do have some great albums, like later I don't think I've ever listened to anything past Frog Stomp or whatever that was. Oh, Fish on the Wall. I talk to you now. This album, ask you about album called Diorama cause... that is great. Diorama? That you would never believe that it was the same band. We all have things that we probably listen to by ourselves that I would not tell either one of you I listen to. Because... Have I told you guys about Nancy Griffin? Who? I think that was last week. <laughs> Yeah. You realize Toad the Wet Sprocket Nancy is about Nancy Griffith, just so you know. Who's Nancy Griffith? Is that the chick that was in Three Men and a Baby? No, I don't <laughs> think she was in Three Men and a Baby. Nancy I Griffith. Have, I have no idea who you're talking she's about. She's a folk. She's a folk artist. She She's a female John Denver. Oh, yeah, female yeah, yeah. John Denver. Yeah, you were talking about that. Yeah, she has some good... Care about that. She's good stuff out there. Guy over here with Amy Grant t-shirts. <laughs> Bright banana. Never had any. Silver chair. <laughs> I, you know what, Amy Grant, uh, 1976, any day over any silver chair, anything they ever thought of. I like some folk. And He's, a, you know, who he likes that really shocked me when we worked together. Who's that? Bruce Springsteen. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, you know, I always liked you know the hits, but as I grew up, it's kind of the same as Tom Petty. You know, once you dive in, you realize you like the sort of peripheral, and then you dive in and you realize I like 1970. Seven Tom Petty album, you know, but you got to dive in, and it's the same with Springsteen. You kind of got to get it, and and I, I always loved Dance in the Dark, you know, those kind of you know the stuff on the radio. I, I know <clears> I'm <throat> in the minority here, and I know you guys both love Tom Petty, but he's just somebody that I just cannot get into. I don't know what to say to that. Um, I think we're I think we're probably done. Yeah. Have you ever heard? <laughs> Tom Petty was the first celebrity death that actually upset me. I, I like him was, more it, as a character in King of the Hill than I like his music. <laughs> oh man! I actually got legitimately upset when Tom Petty died because I really honestly felt like he was the last 
real American songwriter that was legitimately I, doing I, like real I, I'm honest, not gonna, traditional. Yeah, like, I'm not going to do like a comparison of Petty and Springsteen, but Springsteen's still alive, and I definitely give him you know the respect. I of, I, I, I understand, understand what people, you're saying with that, but I, I don't <clears throat> like it's like I, Springsteen's not for everybody. Right. It is a little. It's sort of like black coffee. You know what I mean? It really is. It's like. If you're used to sugar and cream and you go to black coffee. There's a lot of people that compare uh, Tom Petty to Dylan, and I never really cared for Dylan. Yeah. I hate Bob Dylan. No, I don't hate Bob Dylan. I like Bob Dylan. I like listening to... like Bob Dylan should totally do a podcast. (laughs) Who would be able to understand it? I think he's way 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 more normal than you guys are squirreling here. I mean... Cargo shorts. I But okay, so what's your wardrobe story? Yeah. Let's hear it. Oh, Hoover stink. Okay, so you see the shirt that I have on it has a sun on it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I own. Um, I think it's a very fashionable shirt. Yes. It's cool. It's, I like it. So th- that leads me to what the topic is. I own shirts that have suns on them, mountains, that kind of thing. And we're back to John Denver. <laughs> my wife asks me all the time. She's like, you don't like either one of those things. <laughs> <laughs> you do not like mountains. You do not go outside. You hate the sun. He's buying those North Face jackets. <laughs> I do own a North Face t-shirt. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm never, North never, Face never all the hiked, way. Never hiked a day. No, bra, 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 bra. Bra, I got a North Face shirt. <laughs> She's like, why do you buy this stuff? She was like, you hate these things. <laughs> Tell everyone. Sorry, go ahead, go ahead. And it started because I told her a story about how when I was a kid, I had a Bo Sivas t-shirt. And she's like, why? She was like, you hate country music. That, I've totally got your back on that. I I actually love Bo Sivas, which if you're out there, is in fact Hank Williams Jr. But that's... It's the same. Even if I didn't love <laughs> Bo Cephas, I would totally. I had a Harley Davidson t shirt when I was a kid. I hate motorcycles. Sure. I mean, it's, it's just. I guess that makes me a poser, but. <laughs> it's, I, I just think they look cool. So, I mean, I'm wearing a Dolly Parton shirt right now. <laughs> I've, <laughs> I've never owned a Dolly Parton record. I did just uh, was this week actually reminded of a Dolly Parton song that I totally forgot about. Nine to five. What no, no. She had the single in the late, it was like mid late eighties. But she had the Why'd you come in here looking like that? With That's your right. Tiny blue finger painted on jeans. Why'd you Definitely. come in here looking like that? Did you know she wrote "I Will Always Love You" and Jolene in the same day. Now that I did not know. I did not know that. Take tidbit. that. That you're welcome, America. <laughs> yeah. Like, how do you write those two songs? Classic in the same day? songs in the same day. And and was all gussied up the whole time she did. It. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure she. Well, first was. I spent three hours getting ready, and then I wrote Jolene. I had a cup of coffee. Hey, it takes a long time to make me look as trashy. I tell you all this right now. No, you do not call Dolly trash. <laughs> I, yeah, no, I no, no. That's an actual quote from her. <laughs> no, that's, I don't. I don't doubt that. I don't. That's doubt an that. actual. That's a. Th- that's I'll accept. Yeah. So that was my yeah. wardrobe story for the week. <laughs> you wear what you hate. <laughs> Why do you wear mountains? You hate I want everybody to think I'm outside all the time. Well, yeah. It, it's trailblazing. I don't know why I think these shirts look cool. I mean, they just, I mean, Target and JC Penney's, that's what they sell now. Well, I can, I can relate because I don't like anything with any kind of words on it. I know that's kind of stupid. But, like, I've had, like, a blue hat in the past that has no... You're kind of like a nihilist. You just don't get behind the Yeah, right. It says something on it. It's like, I'm pushing it, you know? I hate trends. North Face. I don't support anything but the color blue, green, and gray. And only cheese on my chicken. That's chicken it. Chicken and cheese. Chicken and you cheese. absolutely eat like a five-year-old, like more more so than even, and I, I and I kind of do too. So now, to me, you to realize it. If we were in 1994, I would agree with you. Um, by the way, since, I have some more black bean soup for you. By the way, I love it. don't let me I forget. I love that black bean soup. Did you ever see? <laughs> this is a thing, and uh, someone showed showed this to me years ago. I don't know if it's a regional thing or what. Have you ever seen someone take a bag? And a bag of salted peanuts. You put them in a Coke. Yeah, but it has to be the glass jar, like the like the glass bottle. No, I've never seen that. 
pour the peanuts in the bottle of and coke and then drink the coke with the peanuts is it makes it salty did you find that out in atlanta no oh no it was here years ago but i remember seeing being like and i was totally like that's disgusting that's weird like and it's it's I just want to say this episode is a little bit more boring because y'all met at Bob Evans and ate and talked about everything. We actually didn't. We we made a conscious effort to we only discuss things that we were not allowed to talk about. (laughs) Yes. Yes. That's that's true. That's true. However, I do not think, I don't think in the future that I will eat a hearty meal before I do this. Uh, Now you want to go to sleep. Um, Next week. Yeah. It's going to be exciting. Okay. Is it our first segment? Yeah. It was, well, it's something that two, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a twofer. A twofer. The first one being, uh, you brought up the idea for the segment, uh, famous to us. Uh, I like this segment. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to, we're going to have a guest in here on the third mm-hmm. episode. Mm-hmm. You think it's too soon? No. And I'll tell you why, because on Sunday, the actual day is my birthday. Oh, oh. Cool. And so what we're gonna so what we're gonna do see. is we're gonna do a little segment in honor of the miraculous birth, birth of, of me. <laughs> so I'm gonna have some questions for about me with oh. with multiple choice answers like in this scenario Josh would A, oh, B, or C. Man. So and you, you guys, can't study for this. I'm amazing. And this now one. I'll feel bad. <laughs> I'll feel bad. And if you guys do so terrible, I'll feel like nobody <laughs> knows me. So in order to prevent that, I'm gonna bring in a ringer. And I'm going to bring my friend Doug. I knew that's who it was going to be in I, here. I think it's appropriate I think that's that Doug, un- Doug be the first. I almost think stuff. that's unfair. Why? Because you would be surprised. <laughs> you spend more time with Doug than you have with either of us combined. Sure, but not not for the past couple of years. He knows the blonde-haired, you know, wristband Josh, right? <laughs> opposed, the to the black, opposed to the black-haired wristband, wristband Josh, Josh that's sitting here right now. <laughs> Pre, um, pre-beard, Josh. And do you still owe him $50? <laughs> I, I'm, it's, it's up to I'm here to get my $58. <laughs> I would think Doug classifies as famous to us. Totally. No question about it. Dougie Wuggy Woo is yeah. famous. Doug is always a good us. time. And the next question is... We can we can promote his band. Doug's in a... Uh, in a local uh, band, El Dorado. Talk about, yeah, El talk Dorado. about what their doings and whatnot. Well, they're wearing bandanas. I saw. So next week, everybody, uh, the first installment of Famous to Us. It's people who we think. Wow! In, wow! In, they're coming! Wow! I can't. With believe. also the celebration of my being, because that's the most important thing. If you say so. <laughs> <laughs> Another year. <laughs> It's off how down old, the tubes. How, <laughs> days are, how old are you going to be? Yeah, how old are you? Uh, let's, I'm going to be 35. Really? No. <laughs> I was going to say that that's not possible. That's not want. possible. 41. Yeah. Also, that's, we're uh, yeah. that's more like it. We're all 40s. You know. That surprises me. I, we were going to do this really podcast a few years ago, but we all weren't 40, so we waited mm-hmm. waited for you to catch up. That's right. He can wear cargo shorts. So you know I, what? It's fine. I have to address this because she is going to listen to this. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not just that it was cargo shorts it's it, anything from 94 it was the fact that like they were so like old and ratty and just disgusting it has nothing to do with what sh- it's it's only you telling it yeah. that is the and only reason that I, it's funny I'm if, it, be if it came from anyone else it, it two, wouldn't it wouldn't be funny two things about cargo shorts this week like a yesterday was beautiful 78 degrees and I realized that I, I pretty much my go-to shorts are cargo shorts, and I, I didn't put them on. Because now it's I, in your head. I feel like I can't do this to myself. I only, now that I know, I only it's one me. thing to not know, right? It's now another you know thing now. Uh, these are no longer appropriate. These are no longer appropriate. All the so shorts that I own are cargo, cargo shorts. shorts. So really? it's probably for the best. You want her on your side. So <laughs> you go in there and start Andy rules in her. Yeah. Andy rules. You know, it's not even the case. It's just what she's telling him. You're not even allowed to go in there. You're not even going. You can't no, even you go because I know no, this woman will be so ticked off no. if she meets you once. It's funny you bring up Andy rules because <laughs> <laughs> that That's was the, the name of the podcast. Andy rules. Andy rules. <laughs> we need a segment where Andy explains why Andy rules makes masks <laughs> or whatever we're talking about. She figured out that those existed before anybody. <laughs> 
anybody brought it up. She doesn't know you guys have made fun of me about that for years. Tell me about Andy rules at your house these days. Well, I mean, it's... <laughs> This not, toilet seat is up. <laughs> I don't even care. <laughs> it's more of a... Here's five reasons why you're a moron. <laughs> no, there's none of that. There are rules that apply to everyone else. <laughs> and there's Andy rules. There's rules that apply to me. I know that's how she feels about it. Even though I don't feel like I do that. You know what? It must be true. I've known you guys for 25 years, and you say that. I've been married to her. You guys don't talk to each other. <laughs> and you both came to the same conclusion. You know what, though? You know what I think? What? I think every guy does that. I think you're just one that's willing to admit it. <laughs> you're just pretty Don't make me a hero in pretty this. Pretty vocal no, I'm, about I'm saying, it. Like, there, I, I, I'm sure that my wife, his wife, I'm sure every, every I mean, I'm not talking just to hear it. No. <laughs> Normal people can't do that, but I'm Andy. And that's the origination of I'm on buns. I'm on buns. <laughs> yes. <laughs> if you... <laughs> Normal people would have to work, you know, two or three things, but I'm Andy. I'm on buns. <laughs> Screw you guys. I'm on buns. <laughs> you know, I think that thing like things like that that are what makes people mature into adults. Like, oh wait, these do these rules do apply to me. You mentioned something earlier about taking Jerry to school, mm -hmm. and I, I wanted to ask: Did you drop Jerry off at school and then go home? <laughs> <laughs> Went back to bed. <laughs> All right, Jerry, you're at school. See ya. I'll pick no. you up at 2.30. <laughs> Has he told you that story? No. It's a great story. Yeah, where yeah, His mom, <laughs> Andy's mom, okay, it's been 25 years, so it's okay. He would come to school. His mom would make, get up, Andy, you've got to go to school. You haven't been to school, you know. You've missed too many days and stuff. And drive him in the in the Geo Metro. <laughs> a block and a half away. A block and a half to school to make sure he went in. He would go in the double doors and look out the crack between the double doors and watch her drive off and then walk back home. And go back to sleep. <laughs> go back to sleep. <laughs> She, oh, would, she would go to work like herself? Yeah, yeah, she, yeah, she would go to work. How how often did you do that? Like every day in 10th grade. How did you not? Until I met him. <laughs> <laughs> this episode is the last that's, thing you did. That's right. And it was not as good as I'd hoped. <laughs> <laughs> On my deathbed, what do you wish you had done? There was this one podcast episode. <laughs> I, it wasn't very good. <laughs> the topic for this episode. Mm-hmm. I don't know. We're all going to die. Yeah. We're all going to die. There you go. We're all going to die. And you are too. <laughs> <laughs> With that note. We're all going to die. And so will you. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening. If you have any questions or comments, drop us a line at askandy at colormedad. That's D-A-D-D -D dot com. We want to thank the good old boys at the Ozark Mountain Daredevils dot com for the killer bumper tune. Check them out. And check us out on the web at colormedad. That's D-A-D-D -D dot com. <laughs>